When the dragon came and slew his army, the king stuck his sword into the ground and knelt for forgiveness. Centuries later, in a faraway land, there are two sisters, namely Elodie and Floria, princesses of a poor kingdom surrounded by harsh and barren lands. A red priestess visited their kingdom and asked Lord Bayford, the sister's father, for Elodie's hand, and Lord Bayford agreed. Elodie was reluctant at first, but eventually agreed for the sake of her hungry people. The family of four is headed to Orea, where Elodie is set to marry a handsome prince named Henry. Elodie and Henry spent a day learning about each other, and Elodie thought she might have made the right choice by agreeing to marry the charming prince, who instantly swept her off her feet. Unlike Floria and Lord Bayford, who were happy to marry Elodie off to a wealthy prince, their stepmother, Lady Bayford, felt that something was terribly wrong with the royal family of Orea, especially when she noticed how strange her husband was acting after a private meeting with Queen Isabel. She tried to warn Elodie, but the wedding still happened. After the wedding ceremony, the newlyweds headed to the top of the mountain to perform an ancient ceremony, which Henry explained as a way to pay homage to their ancestors. Upon reaching the top, Elodie saw Queen Isabel wearing the outfit of a red priestess. Queen Isabel handed Elodie a coin, and the newlyweds followed the queen to the altar. Queen Isabel retold the story of how the kingdom of Orea was born. When their ancestors first came to the island, they found that a beast also inhabited the land. The beast had a savage bloodlust and destroyed the village. The king gathered his soldiers to avenge his people, but he terribly failed. The beast forced the king to sacrifice his three beloved daughters, and in exchange, the beast would let the king's people be. It was either the lives of his daughters or the lives of many more. As much as the king adored his daughters, he was still a dutiful king, and he must protect his people at any cost. A pact was made as the three daughters met their end at the belly of the beast and the kingdom of Orea was born. Taking the small dagger used for the ceremony, Queen Isabel cut the palms of Henry and Elodie, and the newlyweds made a blood pact, making Elodie royal blood. To complete the ceremony, Elodie threw the coin she was handed into the chasm. Henry carried Elodie in bridal style as he began walking to the exit so they could return to the palace. At least, that's what Elodie thought before she was ruthlessly thrown into the chasm. The branches of the dead trees surrounding the bottom of the chasm lessened the impact of her fall and Elodie stood to find pieces of clothing she knew weren't hers. Elodie was filled with terror as she came to the realization that she was the sacrifice. Elodie heard a distant fluttering from behind and she looked back to see a light coming from a cave. She approached the light and found a bird caught on fire. After helping the bird, Elodie heard a roar, followed by the screeches of the birds on fire. Elodie dodged the birds and asked for strength from her late mother. This term seemed to catch the attention of the dragon and Elodie hid upon seeing the beast. The dragon spoke of the scent of royalty coming from Elodie and the latter realized it was Henry's blood mixed with hers that the dragon was smelling. The dragon breathed out fire and Elodie ran to avoid it. Elodie screamed when she stumbled upon the scorched body of a woman she recognized as the beautiful woman she saw on the day she arrived at the palace. Elodie hid and stayed quiet to prevent the dragon from finding her. After a while, when she couldn't hear the dragon anymore, Elodie used the accessory on her gown to make a light and find her way out of the cave. She crawled on a narrow path but slipped and fell to a lower level. Elodie found herself looking at a glowing cave. She weakly approached whatever it was that was glowing but was stopped by a pit. Elodie gathered the courage and jumped to the other side. She slipped, but her dress's accessory luckily got caught between the stones and Elodie used the sharp object put inside her corset to climb up. The glowing things on the wall turned out to be glowworms and Elodie took a handful of them to serve as a light before she approached the puddle of water she found nearby. She drank from the puddle, but it was disgusting, so she stood in the middle of it with her neck craned up, catching the droplets of water falling from the ice shards above. But then the ice melted and Elodie jumped away to dodge the dragon's fire. She ran until she went down a narrow part of the cave where the dragon couldn't reach. Elodie found more pieces of clothing and written on the wall were the names of all the women sacrificed before her. Too many were sacrificed and Elodie was devastated at the thought of not making it out alive. Elodie checked on the large wound on her legs and took a rest for a while. However, she slept restlessly as she dreamed of what the other women must have been like when they were in her position. One of the women, Victoria, looked at her and muttered that everything was a lie. When Elodie woke up, she panicked upon seeing the glow worms attaching themselves to the wound on her leg. She calmed down when she realized that the glow worms actually healed her wound and apologized for underestimating them. Elodie studied the map drawn on the wall and continued on her journey. There was a room with three paths and Elodie chose the middle fork just like what she saw on the map. Then she heard music notes and found the crystals that would indicate she was close to the exit. When Elodie found a crown on the ground with a letter V engraved on it, she was glad to know that Victoria had made it out. 
But Elodie realized she made the wrong assumption when she discovered that the exit wasn't an actual exit, just an opening located so high up in the mountain which she should only take if she wanted a death easier than being burned or eaten alive. Then she saw men from a distance approaching the mountain and screamed at the top of her lungs to get their attention. They didn't hear her, of course. The only one who heard her was the dragon and Elodie backed away, screaming in fear when she found the remains of another person, probably Victoria. The dragon was about to release a fire when they heard the men screaming for Elodie. Elodie went back down and followed the voices until she reached a larger room where she found the remains of three baby dragons. Elodie was horrified upon realizing that Queen Isabel's story was false. The truth was that the king attacked the dragon's lair unprovoked and killed the dragon's children. Death wasn't enough punishment for the evil king, and the dragon decided to make him experience pain worse than it felt. Three were taken, so three would be given. Elodie heard another voice and quickly hid, knowing that the dragon would hear the men. And she really did. The dragon killed most of the men and spoke to Lord Bayford, who initiated the search party for his daughter. Lord Bayford unsheathed his sword and bravely faced the beast, but was pulled up, his sword falling and impaling the ground. Upon learning that the man before her was the father of the sacrifice, the dragon ordered him to call Elodie. Lord Bayford raised his voice as he apologized to his daughter, who stayed hidden. He admitted that he already knew before the wedding that Elodie would be sacrificed, but he let it happen because he was promised a large amount of gold. He thought that by trading the life of his beloved daughter, he was doing it for the good of his people. But he was wrong and he now regrets the choice he made. The dragon had enough of his drama and pushed him to the ground, giving him one last chance to summon his daughter. Of course, Lord Bayford didn't listen and instead yelled for Elodie to not show herself up. The dragon was furious and dug her claws into Lord Bayford. One of Lord Bayford's men who was hiding accidentally slipped and the dragon went to where he was, giving Elodie enough time to say goodbye to her father and escape. The dragon flew out of her lair to look for Elodie and breathed out fire in the air to show her anger. The queen saw this and was livid, knowing that the dragon's anger could only mean the sacrifice had escaped. She went to the ship where Floria and Lady Bayford were and captured Floria to give to the dragon before her man stabbed Lady Bayford and left her behind. Lady Bayford, despite her stab wound, still headed to the mountain to save Floria when she met Elodie. Elodie told her stepmother to stay while she went back to the mountain for Floria. The queen wanted to cut Henry's hand to pact it with the blood of Floria, but he refused, saying Floria is too young for sacrifices. The queen told him he was weak before cutting her own hands and pacting her blood with Floria's, and the guards threw her into the cave. Elodie went to where the sacrifice was happening, but it was too late, and she knew that her sister was already at the bottom of the cave. She went down the chasm and gathered some glow worms to heal some of her wounds and took some for her sister. She cut her hair and used it to set up a booby trap before grabbing her father's sword. Meanwhile, the dragon was guarding Floria as she waited for Elodie to come for her sister. She heard a clanging from a distance, which was actually just Elodie's booby trap and flew to where the sound came from. Elodie ran to her sister the moment the dragon left and helped her sister hide before the dragon came back. When the dragon found Floria hiding, Elodie seized the opportunity to point the sword at the dragon's eye. The dragon mocked her, stating that the sword wouldn't kill her but would make her angry. But killing the dragon wasn't Elodie's plan, because she knows that, just like her, the dragon was just wrong too. Elodie tried to explain the truth to the dragon. The girls she was killing were not the daughters of the king who killed his baby dragons, but instead random daughters from another kingdom. Elodie tried to explain the truth to the dragon, but it only angered the dragon who refused to believe that Elodie was speaking the truth. She released a fire that hit Elodie. Luckily, there was water behind Elodie. Elodie resurfaced and ran towards the sword she accidentally dropped, but was pinned to the ground by the dragon who dug her talons into Elodie. Elodie stabbed the dragon's eye and the beast threw her away in pain, coincidentally throwing her right beside the sword that Elodie had drawn into the dragon's chest. Elodie screamed that she wasn't one of the royal family, but the dragon didn't believe her because the scent of Henry's blood still lingered. Elodie stabbed the dragon's hand that was holding her and got thrown away again. Elodie walked towards a pillar as the dragon limped behind her. Elodie provoked the dragon and the beast released a fire, which, with the help of a rock formation behind Elodie, returned to her. The dragon lay weakly on the ground and Elodie seized the moment to explain the truth, that she wasn't of royal blood and that she was just used by the royal family. Seeing as the dragon was easing up, Elodie used the glowworms to heal the dragon's wounds. Then she returned to the palace to crash the third wedding and stop the evil royals from sacrificing yet another innocent woman. Henry profusely apologized when he saw Elodie and attempted to explain himself as if he didn't just marry two women and throw them into the chasm as a sacrifice. Elodie cut him off because there was no way she'd listen to his dumb excuses. 
Then she cupped the bride's cheek, telling her to run away with her family immediately and the bride wasn't going to be told twice. Elodie offered the other attendees one last chance to flee. Some listened and ran away in fear, while others didn't and were just there, either in confusion or disbelief. Queen Isabel was furious and refused to show fear to Elodie. But Elodie reassured the queen that she wasn't the one they should fear, and then she said, This is the end of your story. As if on cue, the dragon appeared and some of the attendees who stayed behind ran away. The dragon waited for a bit as Elodie turned to walk out of the palace before releasing her anger. The dragon killed all the royal blood family that the king had left. Elodie catwalked on the bridge with the dragon flying over her as the palace burned down behind them. Once she got better, Elodie, Floria, and Lady Bayford returned to their ship and headed back home with the dragon. What would you rate this movie? Leave a comment and like if you enjoyed the recap. Thanks for watching.